Well, as I told you the other day, the corn, some of the corn is ready. Uh, corn doesn't necessarily ripen at the same time, but um, let me pull some. That one's ready. A bunch of them are. I mean, I'll be pulling a lot of corn. And I'll show you um, some of the pulling, and then we'll go over there and start uh, shucking it. And we'll show you the results of some of this corn. This is Primus. It's a triple sweet corn, which means it is sweeter than sugar. And that's the way I like it. I like, I like corn like I like my women. Filled out and sweet. Did I say that? <laughs> anyway. Uh, shoot, it's uh, eight feet tall at least. Some of them. Some of them seven. And uh, it's ready to pick. I mean, there's some of them ready to pick. I've already pulled one or two and uh, they look good now again not gonna pull all of them they don't ripen at the same time they don't the ears don't start forming necessarily at the same time even on an individual stalk uh you may have a stalk that has um two ears on it one ear formed early the other one didn't so it's just gonna be some of them be a little later but i'll start this will be the the first uh serious pulling of this corn and um i'll show you what i'm doing um i'm gonna use a knife normally i just Normally, I'll just do this. But I think what I'm going to do is come in there and cut that instead of peeling it off. I think I'm going to come in there and cut that right about there. And that's, that's that much more waste that I won't have to have. Uh, that, that part right there on down. So I'm thinking I'm going to do that. So we'll see how it goes. If it's too big of a problem, uh, then I won't do that. Now, uh, when we get over to the table and start, uh, or to the golf cart over there, and start um, shucking it and getting it ready to put up, you're gonna see that some of this has earworm damage. I treated it lightly twice, once with seven dust, once with a pyrethrin uh, dust, and I didn't, I didn't do like I did my other corn. My other corn, I, I hit every, every silk. I mean, I went by on every silk and put uh, some dust on it. Now, I didn't do it on these. And I probably should have, but it's the the from what, from what I've seen so far, the earworm damage is minimal, and uh, so anyway, let's pick some corn. Okay, let's see what we got. We got a trash can over here for my shucks. I'll throw them, fill up that trash can and throw them in the uh, compost pile. Wish I'd have brought a little brush out here with me. Get these silks off. I didn't do it. Again, some of them are gonna have earworm damage. That one just barely started. Got, got a little dab. I brought one of mama's cutting pads out here, cutting boards or cutting pad, a little silicon pad that we really like. And uh, I'll put the good corn over there. I've seen, you can see, that's evidence of a corn earworm going in right there. So I know that one's got some. Got some damage. In fact, there he is right there. I'm gonna go give him my chickens for his, just for his kindness, you know, helping me out. Eating up my corn, those chickens. Should love him. If they see him. Okay, it is hot. It's in the 90s, probably low 90s, but we just got five inches of rain. 
Well, it's about 300% humidity right now. Holy moly, it's hot. Need to, do it. Need to do a better job. Most of this is filled out. That one's not as filled out as as most of them go. Got, it, it, most of them are. It's got a you know few missing kernels, but not bad at all. And some of them, I, when I pull them, I can tell they're not as filled out. And I'll show you why in a minute. Um, because I planted them. I planted them pretty thick. Planted them pretty close together. Again, Primus sweet corn. Got a little bit of an earworm right there. I don't mind cutting that little dab off at all. It's when it's when they eat two inches down and then one of them will come down here, trail down here looking for greener pastures. That gum run a ear of corn in a hurry. Now we freeze them. We just put them just like I'm cutting it up. Now that one's got a little bit more earworm damage. Just like I'm cutting it up, we will put it in the freezer in gallon freezer bags, usually about four, about, uh, excuse me, one, two, three, four, five in a freezer bag. And then sometimes we'll put a sixth one on top if they're not real long, if we've got room on top of that last one. Now this one didn't fill out, probably a little, I picked it a little early probably. Uh, arm, the earworm thought it was pretty good because he'd been all over that thing, but up in here, it's not filled out. Could have been uh, pollination, but it was probably more like fertilization and because they're just so close together. I, I, I did six, excuse me, I did 12, six in each row. Um, I did 12 per raised bed tub what i call a tub and uh if you notice they're those gray tubs with the bottoms cut out and they're 42 inches long 20 inches wide and i put 12 of these in there so uh, that's you know that could be uh one reason i'm gonna find some that aren't filled out and some aren't gonna be filled out yet anyway because they're just not the early ears that started farming but um some like that other one it was it was one I, one I just showed you it was pretty ripe it just didn't fill out so it's all right we're gonna get lots and lots lots and lots of corn i'll show you a few more and then i'll turn off the camera and just that little dab earworm damage on top i can take that i can accept that I'll let him have that much of it. He's going to die anyway. I mean, you know, I'm pulling him out of there. He's not going to make it very far. So he had a good last meal. <laughs> Whew. I am hot and tired. There's, I've already taken one in the house. One basket that's a half, half a bushel basket. That's a bushel basket, but that's a half. So I've got one bushel uh, over a bushel. That's a full half bushel. That's a rounded half bushel. But let me come over here and show you uh, what I was talking about when I say, uh, well, they may not have filled out like I wanted them to. But the reason these uh, maybe haven't filled out like the, um, like the uh, honey sweet, honey select, honey select, honey select sweet corn, I think is what it's called, from Haas. Uh, it's just a solid yellow and the reason these probably didn't fill out is because i've got 12 of them <laughs> 12 of them in each one of these like i say that's 40 inches maybe 42 and there's six on this side and six on the other side so in other words i planted six and six and put a drip down the middle drip tape so they're pretty doggone thick but it worked i, I mean most of the ones i've pulled in are really really nice ears and uh so I know next time I can do 12 if I want to. I might just do five on each side. I might just do 10 per tub. But how did I fertilize them? Well, I told you that I did the 20-20-20 the, uh, and then the Chilean nitrate, and uh, which is uh, water soluble. But that's when you're supposed to fertilize. When it's tassels, uh, 
uh, when it when it gets up pretty good and i do need to pull these these are different these are peaches and cream that's why i hadn't pulled them yet but i need to and that storm got that one the other day but uh I need to pull these peaches and cream and set them aside and mark them as that because I'm I'm trying to see which one I like best so I'll know what to do next year. But anyway, uh, I digress. When they get up eight or ten inches tall, hit them with some 20-20-20. It's best to do a pre-fertilize, a pre-plant fertilize also. And Hoss has some uh, organic that they recommend for that. And then uh, and then plant and then um, when they get up. Six or eight inches tall, 12 inches tall, hit them with some triple 20, that's water soluble. And then uh, when they get up, I, I fertilized them twice. I think Travis only fertilizes his once. I believe he does once with 20, 20, 20, and then when they start tasseling, he does Chilean nitrate. But I, I did Chilean nitrate twice because I knew I was thick. I knew I was planting real thick and I, uh, corn's hungry, corn's a heavy eater. So, uh, I knew I knew I had to probably overdo it is what I'm trying to say so I think they came out real well uh, that's that's the second one first one's in the house and I'm probably halfway done I've probably pulled 50% of the ears I've, I probably pulled 50% of the good ears um, some of the some of the remainder maybe um, the other 50% are gonna be you know 20% really nice ears like this and some of them little short ones and I had a few that was that the the corn the, the cob itself was pretty short, and it was not filled out all the way up. So I just nipped it off right there. That'd be good. But anyway, got some uh, compost to give to the cows, or, or some uh, shucks to give to the cows, or put in the compost heap. Probably we'll put them in the compost heap, and the cows will probably come eat them. But anyway, I just want to show you the corn. It was really good. In fact, let me just take this little one. Still got a little silk on it. I don't like to get silk in my teeth, but that that was really good. I'm gonna give myself a belly ache because I've already eaten one. <laughs> if I eat one or one or two out here full full of ears, I kind of regret it later. But now, is that better than the honey select? I don't know. I'm going to have to, uh, again, I'm going to do a taste test. My, my honey select is all frozen, so I can't just do a taste test right now. But um, when I get them all put up, I'm, I'm marking the bags, honey select and, and primus, and those will be pieces of cream, the ones on the end. And I'm uh, marking it off, and we'll, we'll cook uh, three years, and I'll try them, and I'll decide what I'm going to plant next year. But right now, <laughs> that's hard to beat. That's dang good. We're pulling, and it's about time. I'm going to see if my daughter come over here with my grandkids and pull their corn so I don't have to pull their dang corn for them. And uh, hopefully then they, they can help me, and I'll give them the corn they pull. How about that for a deal? <laughs> All right. I think we're gone.